Hello? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I heard about Aggie. It's awful. No. Yeah, I heard about George's. I'm not going to George's. I got dressed for it, but I just can't. I don't want to see him that way. I don't want that. Well, I know they're going to they're going to keep him comfortable. They're going to fill him full of beer and chicken wings and just try to make him comfortable. But you know, I've I've got a picture of me and him and Wilma on the wall in a hash. Wilma singing. I gave him a copy of that. I'd rather remember him that way or this. This picture that Bobette tore out of the newspaper and sent me from 97 when he was the Grand Marshal of the Virginia Highlands St. Patrick's Day Parade. It, well, it is sad. And, well, yeah, I mean, like that time that that 14 mile death march hash and, and me and him and Wilma and Skippy and Chelsea, we ran like four miles. We were in two full hours before the FRBs, fall down drunk, volunteered to be hares. It was, yeah, that was a good time. And, well, they, they all weren't good times. It was a time that, that, that we got lost to bad, <clears throat> we'd given up on trying to find the end. We were just trying to, to find civilization. And we were up in the woods and slid down this mountain and in briars, you know, you're used to cutting up your, your shins, but they were cutting our face, and we got in it, we couldn't get out, and took a stick and made a hole in the side of the briars, and kind of wiggled through it, and slid down into this ditch, into this creek, and, and then followed the creek trying to get out, and started climbing these fences that got progressively higher, and <clears throat> it was ours, and then we finally come up on this block house in the future that had these big Rottweilers running out in front of it, and Aggie turns to me and says, well, they're chained up, don't worry about it. And they started getting closer, and I turned to Aggie and said, are you sure they're chained up? And Aggie was 30 yards behind me. He was gone. He left me there. Well, they're, they're bearing down on me, and I'm running toward the fence, and he's already up and over it and lying on the other side trying to catch his breath laughing, and I jumped up on the fence like it was the last chopper out of Saigon, whipped over, and asked him, what the hell? And he was like, well, Ray, <clears throat> I didn't have to outrun those dogs. I just had to outrun you. When I learned something from him that day, and he was right, he was right. And... No, yeah, he's leaving a wife and kid behind, and you know, you know, the kid knows they. Well, sure, you know, kids are smart these days. He, they can see the gray hair in him, and you know, he's not getting around like he used to. He's got to know the end is near. Yeah, you know, I met his wife before most of the other people did. It was during that transition period in Aggie's life when he dropped out of sight for about four months. I was down at Piedmont Park. <clears throat> it was Longhorn Stakes annual Southeast banquet or the award ceremony, a big black tie affair. I was a roadie with the League of Decency at the time. All of a sudden, during all this black tie, real hoopla, <clears throat> Aggie and this stripper he had met come running in and cut off shorts. <clears throat> it turns out that there was like a 1,400-pound stuffed Longhorn steer in the <clears throat> in the middle of it. It was kind of the mascot of Longhorn State. She rips off her clothes, jumps up on the back of it, and starts beating it like she's at Churchill Downs. Aggie's got it, got it in some kind of headlock trying to get Bevo out of there. Well, security come and whisk them. You know, guys are throwing money at her. Yeah, her stage, he was, she, he'd met her at Cheetah 3. Her stage name was Joanne. But I think her real name was Raven or Mercedes, something like that. Anyway, I went out and talked to the people, and they agreed to let them go with a warning if they agreed never to go to another Longhorn Steakhouse in the continental U.S. Well, yeah, but it's, it's just really sad. Um, well, well, okay, but what I, yeah, okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a respectable amount of time, five to seven days, then I'm going to give Joanne a call and see if there's anything at all I can do. Anything. Because I still owe that sorry bastard for those dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll see you.